My name is Matt, welcome back to the show. And today we're going to talk about this. So this is a turbine blade from a jet engine. This is actually a low pressure turbine blade. You can generally tell low pressure turbine blades one because they're very long. Like this is very long and they're not very fat. You see jet en um, fighter engines, you know, uh, turbo fan engines, not um, oh, not turbo prop engines. We see turbo fan engines, but not with a big bypass fan. Um, basically jet engines like the um, EF2000 from the Eurofighter, stuff like that. Or the G220 or T, was it TM? I can't fucking remember. Any road. <laughs> not that that matters. Um, but we're going to talk about materials here. We're going to talk about these, this single crystal growth thing. And it is amazing how it works. It's an awesomely simple system. It just took someone a long time to think about it. So basically, um, we need to talk about solidifying metals. So if you have a metal that is a liquid, all these atoms inside are just fucking strolling around. There's enough energy in these things to basically stop them from sticking together. You've got to kind of think about it like um, like a riddle that's shaking. So all these other molecules are in motion. They can only basically stick together and bond together to create a solid, which is what we call freezing. They can only do that when we stop shaking it and it allows it to stick together. That's a, a weird way of explaining it, but that'll do. So when you um, when something solidifies, usually it's around an inclusion, but let's not get into that. When something solidifies, what happens is, is there are points which we call nucleation sites. And generally they're always on the surface. They're on the surface because, just say if this is a mould, this is a box or a die, a die casting, something like this. This is liquid at the moment. And what happens is, is that the heat radiates outwards, it gets you know, thermally conducted out to the rest of the world. You get convection currents inside this as well. Um, but the heat will be conducted and radiated outwards into the outside world. This is cooling. And what happens is, is that all atomic structures have a crystalline um, arrangement. So for diamond, you know, they like to do this with one in the middle. So it's kind of like a, a, a three-sided pyramid, um, stuff like that. And there's loads of, you know, there's cubic, body centre cubic and there's all this other rest of it. In a sense, you can think of these as Lego bricks, right? So think that every um, you know, two by two Lego brick, that is a crystal. And what they do is they start to stack on top of each other and all start to knit together and stick together. And what happens is, is these Lego bricks start to build a crystal. Let's just say these are square crystals, like something like salt or something. They build square crystals like this. And then what they do is they keep on adding bricks like this. Now this would be wonderful if it worked this way because these bricks would all just stick together. The problem is, is there's always somewhere in here that starts to cool down and there and there and there and there and there as the whole thing starts to solidify. The problem is, is these atoms don't talk to each other. They are literally separated by liquid atoms. So this one starts to build blocks like this and this one starts to build blocks like this and this one starts to build blocks like this. Basically they don't know each other's orientation. There's no communication. So as soon as this starts to expand and add more bricks to it, you can see what's happening now. We're running out of fucking room and we have crystals that are weird shapes. This one does this. And then what you do is it's these boundaries where these Lego bricks just basically don't clump together. You imagine if you had, you kept on putting four by twos together, four by twos together, and then someone else over there is doing it. And if you stop time and look at your orientation as you're putting these bricks together, they won't match up. This is what we call grain boundary layers, and basically this is where this snowflake, in a sense, is starting to grow, and then they don't align to each other. So basically what you do is, when you pull your part out, you will have a shape, let's just say it's a turbine blade, so let's just say it's a turbine blade like this, and then in here you'll have a crystal that does this, a crystal that does this, this one squeezes in here because the, all these atoms have to solidify because they've cooled down. And it's all like this and it's all a fucking mess. Right? And this is the same with salt crystals, with sugar crystals. This is the same with everything when it solidifies. Right? So it all does that like so. And then basically when you put stress on this, so just say we've got a fixed point here. And we fucking apply a force here, whacking great big force. When we get to the yield, when we get to basically the fracture point, when this material fails, it cracks. 
it can either do two things. It can either just say you've got all your molecules, that are your atoms that are in a nice crystalline structure like this, and you have some other ones that are off centre, like uh, not aligned like this. It can either try and crack and break these bonds, or it could just go down this fucking shit bit, which is the grain boundary. That's exactly what it does. When it fractures, it fractures like that. Basically, the, the weakest point of resistance, the lowest point of resistance, and it just snaps off iron, sayonara, away you go. The other problem is, is your thermal conductivity also changes, stuff like that. So basically, what they did was, right, we want to put more and more power in these engines, we want to get more and more power out of them, and the way we extract that is through the turbine system. That's the power extraction, in the sense you can think of a turbine blade, almost like a piston. Not in a mechanical way, but basically in a, um, a theory way, it's extracting some of the energy that's out of that jet blast out the back. So what we want to do is, it wouldn't it be great if we could get rid of these boundary layers? That would be fantastic. So what they were trying to do is that they know which way the stress is. So it's like a bit of wood. If you had a turbine blade like this, and all your grain boundaries were like this, like grains in wood, when you apply a whacking great big force here and this bit is fixed, then it's just going to go snap and clean crate straight across the middle. They don't want that. What they want is actually to be perpendicular to that. So what they did is they made turbines, which and this was called that, uh, directional solidification. Right, so this is dir directional solidification. This was the first thing that Rolls-Royce started to do. Basically what they're doing is, is they're growing the crystals in a vertical manner like this. So when you apply a force like this, it's compression and tension against the blade as this tries to bend. But we all know that wood is stronger uh, when you apply force against the grain and not with it. When you split logs, you split them at the top. You don't turn it on its side. If you turn a log on its side and whack it with an axe, it just compresses it and it goes, fuck off. If you put it end on, along with the grain and give it a whack it just splits it says fuck off and in a sense the cells the um what's it like lichenin lichenin and cellulose i think it's lichenin <laughs> oh someone put it in the fucking i'll put it on the screen um but basically you can think of the cells in a tree the actual cells of their cellulose and what have you you can think of them as like grains inside a piece of metal so when you apply a force, this, this is a lot stronger. And the way they do this is they have, when they cast it, what they do is they purposefully almost, they have a chill, this is what we call a chill. And you cool it from the bottom, and then you cool it from the bottom and it starts to solidify. And what happens is, is it grows columns in a sense of crystals. So they all grow out and they're in a race in a sense that way as it's cooling. So basically if you control your cooling, you very slowly cool from the bottom, very well controlled. What you do is actually, is you don't just take it out and just slowly cool it from the bottom. You actively remove the heat like this. And then the crystals grow up. Now obviously the problem is, is these crystal boundaries are shit in this direction. You know what I mean? But this was better than this. Or oh, this, it wasn't like this, they never did this. This was the random crystal thing that you saw at the beginning. Yeah, where it could just break anywhere. There's a weak point in it somewhere directional solidification like this meant that they had stronger parts then someone said well can't we just make a super crystal they do it for semiconductors when they make grow silicon crystals here's a picture of that looks like a giant dick basically you seed at the bottom and just allow the whole thing to cool and it basically creates a crystal with metals um, and their solidification techniques and stuff it was a bit different and they were having problems with it because of inclusions and stuff like that so how you can either try and make a metal 100% pure but they wanted to use alloys which means there's always some kind of inclusion we can't literally start feeding atoms everywhere if you just cool a box a box a cube full of metal there are going to be different points that nucleate and create these grain boundaries there's two things you can do. You can either cool something really slow, that means massive crystals grow, or you can cool things really fast, which is quenching, and then little crystals form, because they, they don't have the time to grow. They grow a bit, and then that's it. Everything's all solid and frozen. So th this is what they had to do. But they wanted one of these bad boys. They wanted a single crystal. How do you make the whole thing? This is, in a sense, 
just one person making a blade out of Lego bricks, just going one, two, three, four, and just making sure that all, uh, but it's, no, it's not like that, is it? Because that's adding crystals. It is just getting a Lego brick and being able to just expand it into the shape you want. As, as it would be with Lego, it's very hard to do, or it was at the time. So what do they do? They use investment casting, which is basically using wax. They have a blade like this. And then what they do is they have this little squiggly thing at the bottom. And then they have a chill region at the bottom. And it's like, why the fucking hell does that help? It's quite cool how this, it's quite cool. Um, this is a single crystal, so SC. And basically what you do is let's just focus on the chill region at the bottom. Get in, baby, no! Get in. Like so. What you do is you start cooling from the bottom, so there's a nucleation point here, here, obviously a lot of them at the surfaces, like this, and these start growing crystals, like so, and these start growing crystals, like so, <laughs> like that, and then what happens is, is this crystal grows bigger, this crystal starts to squeeze in, this one grows bigger, this one grows bigger, like that. And obviously it's a lot finer than this, I'm just doing this for gem demonstration purposes. Then what happens is, is this crystal grows a bit bigger, that one gets squished out, this crystal grows bigger, this crystal grows bigger. So this crystal here has just gone out, 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 that's the nucleation site. This has gone out, out, out. And then what happens is you come to this choke point right here. Now there's two crystals that are extending into here, there's this one and this one and they both make their way to here. So now we've got a, a two crystal. It doesn't matter what the number is, it can be a thousand. But basically you come to a radius. So this one grows like this and this one gets choked out and it stops. This is all now solid. And then this one, the single crystal, every time it comes to a radius, if there's any competition, it can just basically squeeze it out. It's like having two riders on a race track go around a track. If one rider always has the inside line, then he is going to be the fastest and he's going to start to pull away. It's kind of like that thing. Every time we do this meandering like a river, every time we go around it, it's choking out another crystal that's in there. And they have just so many turns and so they, they, they work basically calculate the angles they need. And every time it just smushes out one, smushes out one. And by the time you get to the top, so you've got the end of your tube coming up and then you've got your investment casting like this, your cavity, it is just one crystal that grows up like so and then this is a single crystal these aren't sing these aren't different crystals these are not grain boundaries this is just showing the progression through time and then this is one super crystal just one on its own absolutely fan dabby dozy perfect now people did say in the comments when i did a single crystal growth video before people were asking do you think they're going to use this for con rods and stuff they'll only start to use it if they are having failures so the engine power would have to be that high that they are starting to get failures. Now, what you can do is if you can make your crystal, your um, your component stronger and stronger and stronger, you can start to reduce the weight. That's basically the only saving they'll do. You can, you could do um, single growth piston uh, pistons. You could do crankshafts, but then saying that you're using the forging process, which actually gives you other benefits, so on and so forth. The cost in the research would be prohibited in a sense with Rolls Royce and stuff it was their future right now the dick and the balls has got forged rods and it seems to be working fine with 320 horsepower or what have you so until they reach that limit they'll be fine doing it hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit